finished. Let's <laughs> let's move to Gypsy. I mean, we said we were going to go 20 minutes. I ended up going probably like, oh, 41. Woo! I, <laughs> that story just had like way more to get through. Um, let's talk about Gypsy. So first of all, setting the scene. If you've lived under a rock, Gypsy Rose was somebody whose mother had Munchausen syndrome by proxy, which is essentially where you do things to make your child either ill or appear ill to everybody around them. Um, lots of times people put blood in urine. People give their child a feeding tube. Um, people shave their head or administer drugs that they don't need. Gypsy had all of these things and more. Um, and she endured that for, how long did she endure it? 19 years? Oh my goodness. Yes, it was sick 19 years. Um, yes. Yeah, she was 19 when it all went down. So, yeah. Okay, so she endured this for 19 years. She underwent 30 unnecessary surgeries um, in total. And she had no autonomy. And she thought she was younger than she was. So at 19, Gypsy thought she was 14. We'll preface mm -hmm. with that. Her mom shaved her head, had her teeth taken out, told her she was 14 years old, a perpetual child. And meanwhile, she was healthy. And when Gypsy discovers this, to get out, ultimately her mother, she has her mother murdered by her ex-boyfriend. She did nine years in prison and she just got out. Is that a good, re is that a good recap yeah that was a good synopsis for sure that's it in a nutshell okay so that's it in a nutshell and she underwent severe child abuse and i want to say really quick before we dive into gypsy i looked up other cases of munchausen syndrome by proxy that's happened because i'm just curious like are there cases worse than gypsy is she the worst and i read through eight cases and all of them resulted in the fatality of the child and some children went under 1,800 surgeries. Some mothers killed all nine of their babies. And it's just a warning that this is a very serious mental condition. And it wasn't an option for her to stay in that house. So there's a lot of controversy on how she got out of the house. But as far as staying in it... It's it's almost rarely heard of for the child to survive experiences that severe. I totally agree. Uh, and I know that there are campaigns that are railing against Gypsy. Um, and like I said earlier, I, I Gypsy has an innate ability to manipulate to this day. I think because of the lesson she learned from her mother. However, she was she was the victim and if she hadn't gotten out she wouldn't be here today like that's all there is to it in my mind and i think it was one of those by any means necessary situations um we also have to take into consideration that she was on medications uh gosh knows <sighs> how many medications to kind of keep her numbed up or in this kind of altered state at all times um and then i <laughs> definitely some diminished capacity too if you think about just her the lack of education like just kind of this place that her mom had held her in this little bubble this little space so I, like i said i know there's campaigns that rail against gypsy and kind of the fact that her star is risen post-release um which we can get into and talk about what that looks like for her but i you know it, it was what it was was it a great situation? Would I, would I have hoped that she could have communicated it to someone who could have actually helped her? Absolutely. Right. I, I hate that it yes. went this route, especially learning what we learned um, in this three night documentary, even about Dee Dee's childhood. Um, because I, I'll just throw it out there that I feel like I, I think the grandpa did it. I believe that if the grandpa subjected Gypsy to that, gosh knows what he did to his own daughter. And Absolutely. it also kind of begs the question about Dee Dee because Dee Dee was in fact a predator as well. Gypsy's father was 17 years old and she yes. was, Dee Dee was 23. Like, that's not okay. I think it was a cycle of abuse that was perpetrated. And I think yes. Dee Dee was just kind of to the 10th the power that that's absolutely a really great way to break that down and i think that 
One thing that I found so interesting watching Nick Vile's podcast episode with Gypsy Rose that dropped today that we didn't get in the documentary is it's just time, her talking, that an editor doesn't have the ability to just cut, 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 and just get across the same points that we've been getting. And Gypsy takes so much accountability and recognition for she was conditioned to lie to cheat, and to project an image of herself to evoke sympathy. She has taken a lot of prison courses and classes on accountability to the point where she recognizes that, first of all, that's not right, so she's trying to rewire her brain, and second of all, that she made decisions prior to the crime that she could have opted to not make that could have changed the fate of things and she takes accountability and wishes she did differently that alone is such a stark contrast from the attitude we get from the barnets when we hear him speak that i do truly believe that for sure. she's not just saying that for publicity i truly believe sitting there for nine years you know and, the, and another thing is that Gypsy cleared up is she loved her mom. People think like people have messaged her and said to her, she got what she deserved or I would have done the same thing they said to her in prison. And she's like, it sickens me. She's like, because I loved her, you know, like I loved my mom, but I had to get out of there. And I already felt like there's no way to leave. I tried to run away three times and all three times she found me. And when she mm -hmm. brought me home, I was punished worse. Um, okay. So chained that was i wrote that down for things we didn't know i had no idea prior her mom used a dog leash and hand um no no the kind of the breakdown of it in this in this prison confessions was kind of the, our first time getting a true glimpse into that and i know gypsy I, I i i didn't know that the act was unauthorized i thought you know they had consulted um with gypsy for that so when she came on and was like no i've lived it i didn't need to watch it or any of those things i was like oh okay so we only got kind of a fragment of what was really going on so no it was super telling and i agree with you to the point of her taking ownership and responsibility i do feel like that came through um in prison confessions i felt yeah. like i felt like she did not do what we see a lot of criminals do which is deflect and try to pass the bus. Um, she was like, no, I I did it and I'm sorry for it. She's like, I just I just don't, you know, no. I think she's been very candid and very honest. Yes. I'll give I'll absolutely give that to her. And it does make so much sense. She was kind of conditioned to be a master manipulator. Like that was her yes. training. <laughs> yes. So it's probably still she probably still has residue of that. And she said, you know, too, if I you know, it, it, if she had the socialization, if she was at school to have multiple personalities, have, you know, some people are like, I watch Disney movies. I didn't do this. Okay. Then you, then you went to school and a guy snapped your bra and you quickly realized that Prince Charming was a dick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So was going to be a little douche to you to show you he liked you for a few years. Um, so Gypsy didn't have that. Nor does she have girlfriends to talk about behavior with and compare things to. So if she had asked someone who did not have multiple personalities, they would never have agreed to the idea or thought it was reasonable to kill her mother. It would have been, and this is the other thing, people need to, people need to keep in mind that while Gypsy could have asked for help, her mother legally made it so that she couldn't. She was declared mentally incompetent. Anything okay. said by Gypsy was going to be not believed. I, I truly don't even know if family would have believed her. Even if she told her dad, I'm not sure what he would have said. What family could, and that's the other thing. It's like, it's like, so we know that Dee Dee and, and Gypsy's dad, there was the age gap, right? She, she kind of, took the 17 year old boy and did whatever. And he didn't love her. He told her that Dee, Dee gets mad, runs away, does all these things. So what really was that dynamic and how much access did he really have to Gypsy? 
um, growing up? How how safe was that? Now we know that um, she did allow Gypsy to talk to her grandfather, but now we know what was going on with granddad. So was That's that such really a, good a place point. she could have gone to? I don't think she felt... Uh, ex- well, if we go by what happened in the act, when they moved to, what was it, St. Louis, when they moved to Missouri and they do the Habitat for Humanity and Gypsy starts connecting with, like, the neighbors, that was kind of, like, the first time we saw her have, like, someone outside of Friends. the home that maybe she could have confided in. And I think that's yes. what kind of helped lead to everything. But you're right. There was no one that was really going to trust her, not in terms of yes. the authorities. And I don't know if people understand what it's like to be... or how serious it is to be declared mentally incompetent. It basically means that you have this one person that's over all of your affairs. If something goes on with you, they're always going to be contacted. So there was never a situation where Dee Dee would not be brought into it. There was never going to be a safe space for her. Absolutely. um, In terms of talking to medical professionals, police, no one. Yeah. You're so right. (laughs) And not even not brought into it, picked up by her. Like, oh, you just called against her? She's your ride. You know what I mean? Like, you're going back home with her. Um, And you brought up such a great point because not only was her father kept from her, but her mom told her, your dad doesn't love you. He doesn't love us. He has a new family. He doesn't even send you money, Gypsy. He doesn't love you. You know what I mean? And putting that in a child's brain who already feels abandonment issues that their parent has left, um, you believe that. You know what I mean? Like you're not, you're not so gung ho. And the father takes accountability. He says, I wasn't there for Gypsy to know Mm -hmm. that she could have told me, you know, I I wasn't there in that capacity. Um, And she talks about on Nick Vile's podcast, and this was so interesting to me, that her mom consciously had her circle get smaller as she got older. You know, at first you can trust her to go to school and be around a couple people, but as she can speak and as she can tell her own story she kept that circle like one person and that's herself sure and she had to because she didn't want to be outed or you know exposed in that way Uh, i would like for them eventually to go do a deep dive on dd though i'm i'm interested kind of i really am interested in in her upbringing and how she got to this point where she would do all of these things to her baby and then even tell the baby that she's going to die, that she's got leukemia. That was like what the final <laughs> sickness, right? And she said every every other month it was like, okay, yes. she's got a year to live. She's got a couple months to live. It was perpetually, you know, her baby is going to die. And she was going to carry it out at some point. Um, it, you just knew <laughs> Dee Dee was going to take her out at some point. Like it was bound to happen. It was inevitable. And Dee Dee, one other thing we never found out about her is what was her medical condition like? Because in the act, you almost feel like she has like diabetes mellitus or something's going on um, and edema in her legs, like her legs got super swollen and she couldn't walk around the mall, kind of limiting her physical capacity. Um, So they never touched on that. And like, at least to my knowledge in any of this. So I'm kind of wondering, like, what was going on with Dee Dee, too? And also the fact that she had like these um, strong pain pills because um, Gypsy was like, I would take my mom's pain pills. And I'm like, well, why does your mom have pain pills? Like she had a surgery though. We know about a surgery Dee Dee had, right? And then she stole her doctor's script pad and she wrote herself the prescriptions. So that's how she had everything. (laughs) Can you believe that? She just said like... Like crazy. That is crazy. Um, What do you think about the doctors who did these surgeries and the fact that Gypsy, as far as getting malpractice and suing these doctors, like nobody, no attorney really wants to take on the case. Like those two questions I have for you. Well, I think so like (laughs) fun fact, I've worked in insurance for like the past like a million years, right? So <laughs> it, what's crazy now is that what happened then I don't think could happen now, especially if Gypsy had a state funded um, insurance program like Medicaid or something like that, because now they have, especially for people who get prescribed very strong drugs, they kind of have this like 
one doctor, one pharmacy rule. So I don't, some of those things I don't think could happen present day, but um, I will say it's a lack of due diligence on a lot of the doctors behalf. I will say that the one doctor that was in the documentary, um, you could tell like he had, a, it seemed to be a visceral reaction, right? Um, to now looking back at every sign that he missed, kind of just trusting the word of a mom until what they say his medical assistant felt like, hey, we need to look into this because, um, yeah, I but, you know, back then, I don't know if they had the technology or because didn't, wasn't there like, there were date of birth changes. Um, there yes. were certain demographic changes that Dee Dee did to kind of fly under the radar. <sighs> I think though some tests you kind of have to do two or three times. Like I can't see how you say she's got this terrible terminal illness without a concrete diagnosis. Like I don't, that part right. I don't understand. So I, I believe they should be culpable. I think it's probably the attorneys um, finding some sort of intention, maybe on the doctor's part or some sort of um, lack of due diligence based yes. on whatever the medical criteria are. And so that might be hard to prove because the doctors probably, you know, asked for the information, DD signed a consent, release of information. That's all you can really. Yes. Oh, it's so crazy because, you know, like even thinking like neurologically, like when you think that she, her legs aren't working, the, the nerve test that they do, you can't fake it. You can't fake your leg shooting a reaction when the doctor hits it with the mallet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what the fuck were they doing? Genuinely, what did her appointments consist of? I I I, Friend, I don't get... I've watched enough of these medical these doc bad surgeon, doctor death, all this stuff. It's not surprising to me that doctors get away with everything. Like I sometimes I wonder True. like what do y'all what do y'all do? Like it, because I would think you would do a first test, a second test. Like, let's make sure this this doesn't feel right. This doesn't seem yes. right. Let's, you know, like, where's Dr. House when you need him? <laughs> but there had to be some level of, um, like, yeah, the doctors were not, they couldn't have been on the level, right? Like, there's no way. Because it's like, you're just not doing what you're supposed to do. Absolutely. I think you're taking her word for it. And you're just not doing your due diligence. At the end of the day, somebody and will take it. She needs to find Michael's lawyers. They'll do it from um, Natalia Grace. His lawyers will do anything. Oh my God. So true. So, so true. Um, what do you, Gypsy, what do you think about her ex, Nicholas, being in prison? And do you want to know what Gypsy said on Nick Viles' podcast when they asked her if she feels bad for him? Well, like, I definitely want to know, but here's, and this might be an unpopular opinion because I've had so many people come under my video um, that I did about the kind of my initial impressions of the documentary. And they're like, well, I just want to know why she's out and he's locked up. And I just want to say that that man is certifiable and he does not need to be on anybody's streets ever. If it hadn't have been Gypsy's mom, he would have done that to someone else. It, I think he had murderous tendencies and what i what i say in terms of my perspective in terms of why she got second degree why he got first degree i think there's extenuating circumstances on both sides right like i feel like he crossed state lines he was ready he kind of had she initially planned it but he kind of had the details and took control of it he had these murderous tendencies he not only wanted to take her out but then he also wanted to violate her after post-mortem which is like what the heck he had delusions he thought he was some 400 500 year old vampire named victor like there are so many other things as it relates to him that need to be dealt with now do i think he should be in prison i think he needs to be somewhere for the criminally insane i think he needs intensive treatment and therapy but i will say i think if it hadn't been gypsy in that situation it would have been a, another situation he, he wanted to kill like in my opinion absolutely but i do want to know what she said absolutely what did she say i i agree she pretty much kind of said what you said actually um pretty much it's like you know 
she she's not going to comment and say that he should be in a mental facility rather than prison because um I, I don't even think legally her attorneys would let her make a statement like that. You know, she's like, she acknowledges that she's the reason for Nick being in prison, you know, that she's the reason for it. But she doesn't know she feels sympathetic for him because she believes that Nick had murderous tendencies. He had a fantasy and a desire to murder, and he mm. got the ability to live out his dark fantasy. Like, he had these dark fantasies. He got the ability to do that. It's something that he wanted to do. He wanted to kill. He wanted to rape. He got the chance to do that, and he took it. Um, I, I, um, I think that he belongs in a mental health facility and I hope that he can get enough treatment and maybe be somewhere that's even a little bit more comfortable to be, you know, for him. But I don't think that he should be in society because yeah. I, I, I really think it would, I really think it's dangerous. That's just my I personal opinion. Yeah. That's yeah, my personal I, opinion. I, yeah, no, I think no, raping the no, daughter no, no, no. at thirteen, like he, like he said, he had ideal ideations and hopes of if Gypsy and him have a child that he would rape her at thirteen years old. What? Yes, they said that in the Lifetime special. It was it was so gross. That was oh, the. I must have missed that. That was the um like the, the their their parameters of their relationship. Like first of all, he got to rape either Gypsy or her mother after he I murdered her. her. And that when they had children and their 13th birthday, he was allowed to take their daughter's virginity. So that comment doesn't make me think he should ever be around children, ever be an uncle, Never. ever be. But no, I, I totally agree with that go to John or whatever his name is, he needs to be under the jail. Like, you know, get him the help he needs, all the things, but he does not need to. I don't know why people are saying that he should be like, why is she out and he's still in? I, I think it's they're, It's just different. <laughs> it's just very different. Like, he's scary. And you know what? Like, he didn't have a fair trial, so I'll admit it. He had a public defender. They did not tell the judge that he had autism. They did not tell the judge his IQ. They did not tell the judge that it was Gypsy's plan and that he went through with it. They didn't do anything for him. They did not bring in a psychological evaluation. Um, none of that. All, all of those details that would be pertinent, they did not say on his behalf. How did they so, end up getting I separate do know trials? I think it was because he committed the act and she was the accomplice to murder. And since that's not a real charge, she just got charged for, I, I think, like orchestrating it or something. Um, I don't know okay. what the charge is legally called, but okay. um, he had a public defender. And I don't know if her father paid for her attorney. I've, I've always wondered that. How did she have an attorney? I've always wondered that. That was better than just a public defender. Um, but she did and he didn't. And I do know that for somebody who is on the autism spectrum, that you typically can't get charged first degree murder. So that charge shouldn't have been stuck on him. It should have at least been a second okay. or... I don't know what other word to use. Like, I don't know what other charge they'd give him, but I, I do know that he was charged unfairly and that all the information that Gypsy's been saying in her documentaries have kind of like screwed the pooch a little. Like, it's kind of like you should have just sat there and ate your food because you've said stuff now that makes it look like you were a little bit more involved than before. And now well, his though. lawyers have grounds. Yes. Yes, like that, for example. I don't know that that video needed to be out there. Ever. 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 So I was just going to say, um, do, so you think they're going to... <laughs> like, what? Um, so you think they're going to... He's going to get a new trial? Go I... to John. Will he get I would think so. I would think. It's okay. it's interesting because public says, like, I keep hearing he can't get a new trial. Gypsy said on Nick Vile's podcast today that he was going to be in prison for the rest of his life. I don't know how she can confidently say that. Well, but I did hear on court TV that they were going to at least try for a retrial. Okay. Because, yeah, I remember reading something yesterday or whatever, and they were like a couple years ago, they had made an appeal um, for ineffective counsel. 
like you were saying, it was just a public defender that didn't do the job and they were like, no, <laughs> Night, you'll never be free. Um, okay. Ryan, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan is the new boosty, right? Ryan is, He's the Ryan new is her. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out there. I think I'm grossed out and I'm a girly who watches life after lockup. So I feel like I'm a connoisseur of a <laughs> <I'm> relationship, <laughs> right? <laughs> no i think that most of i think it's most of the men that seek women especially in this kind of, of a high profile situation they are definitely opportunists um they definitely have something in mind in terms of of like manipulation and control so here here here's my predictions and here's my thought right They're, they are married now um it's not gonna last long i hope I just pray Gypsy doesn't end up back in the slammer. I hope he doesn't get violent. I hope he doesn't do any of the things, but there's something about him um, that gives controlling vibes to me, that gives like, I'm gonna try to run your life, that gives I'm insecure about kind of who I am as a man. Like, I, I, think, it's, I think it's unhealthy. I think Gypsy should have listened to her, her, her um, Mother, what is it? Her stepmom, stepmom and her sister, mm -hmm. who said, "Date him, have a great relationship, but don't get married as soon as you get out. Live your life a little bit. See what the outside is like. Don't be beholden to some stranger. Because let's be serious. Like, um, all I can do, all I can do is pray for my good sis. But I don't think he's a good guy. I don't get good guy vibes from him." I I agree with a lot of what you said, but for me, my issue is the timing. I don't understand why a good a good man who's confident in himself, confident in their relationship, and also just strong enough to say, I hope you want to be with me, but you've never dated. You've never even been on a physical date, so you need to do that because until then, I don't want you to be with me because you're going to be curious in a couple of years. No. What does he do? He wants to get married on their seventh Lock visit. Her down. Yeah, their seventh visit before she's out of prison, get married, do the whole thing. And in my mind, that's so that she can't change her mind and so exactly. that he has access to her financial assets. And likely she didn't issue a prenup because she didn't know she had six million followers waiting for her. How could she? How could she know? Um, I do think that it's concerning that even multiple times, no matter how many people ask him, what did you think when you watched Gypsy Rose's story? And he says, I watched it three years ago and I felt, I don't even know if he says I felt bad for her. So I'm not going to add he that. Didn't. He says, I thought she was cute. He She's says, cute. I thought she was cute. That's it. That's it. Every time. That's it. So, so like shallow you, and so gross. And what was cute about her? Truly. Her head was shaved. She was emaciated. She was missing teeth. Like, be serious. And she looked like a 13-year-old girl. She looked 14. I don't know what's what was cute about it. And then he's I don't a teacher. Get it. And he works with, he works with kiddos, right? I it's, just feel like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. It's a mess. I do. I, I feel like he's, I think you're right. And I think what the thing that she didn't want to do is the thing that she's doing because her family and her have said, you know, I was, when she said, I felt more, like the most freedom, like her first day in jail. I think she said she felt like the most free she'd ever felt in her life. But I'm like, you leave the prison of your mom's control. You go to a real prison where you're definitely a prisoner and now you're entering this marriage and not saying marriage is a prison, but you're on lockdown. You, you don't have time yes. to really understand and be in the world and be around people and explore who you are as a woman. Like, And for any man to see that and to be like, I still want to lock you down. I want to make you mine. Um, and not give her the freedom and the opportunity to do that. I have a question for you, though. So I think in episode six, um, you know, they talk about they got married and then they were immediately like, I want to, she's like a couple weeks yeah. later, I think we should get an annulment. I don't know if he's enough for me. I don't know, whatever. He talked her off the ledge. What do you think about the long-term viability of their marriage? No. 
I don't think that they're going to. <laughs> I don't think that they're going to stay together because um if they do great. I want to preface with I am wishing Gypsy the absolute happiness. Absolutely. Like and I and when I say these things, it is because I am unbiased and I don't care about hurting Ryan's feelings. I am seeing yeah, somebody yeah. who's been a victim of the system, adults, people not helping her, people who do love her, abusing her. So I'm giving my true opinion the way I give my opinion on like Amanda Bynes' life. And it's like, I'm only thinking of you, <laughs> like only mm -hmm. thinking of you and your life. Um, so with that being said, I think that it's a it, it it's it's just a disservice to treat yourself like you're not you're not going to be curious. You mean to tell me that with her celebrity status, let's just say shit, Jack Harlow comes up and he says, Come "I want to date you. I want to date you." She's going to say no. She's going to say no. He wants her to say no to everybody who she could for Ryan. And I'm not in the no shade, no tea oh, towards shade him. On my end. But it's it's shade. I shade. <laughs> Ryan, I'm <laughs> Ryan, you know, you're lucky. Like Ryan, don't play with me. Like Jack Harlow. Be serious. Bobby Aldorf. Like... Yeah. Bobby Aldorf or whatever the hell she got on Drake, like randomly to sit in the same bed as her. You know what I mean? Like anything's possible. Anything's possible. So I think they jumped the gun. I don't think it's going to last. I appreciate her sister's genuine concern and just kind of being like, it's feeling opportunist. Like, she's like, I feel a little bit better, but. I, not really. I wouldn't, I don't feel good about it. Yeah, but not really. Like, she pretty much said that, which I loved. Um, I did too. I was like, oh, I like her sister. <laughs> Me too. I'm like, yes. But, but Gypsy um, has the spirit about her. You can tell that, and I, I mean, she's very charismatic. Even watching her, she's blossomed, in, blossomed into this beautiful woman. And Absolutely. like you said, with this kind of, with her star rising, she's going to want to see. And uh, listen, Ryan, you might've been a nice guy while she was on the inside, but uh, I love her. Yeah. And I just, oh. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying from what I've seen. They, they, I mean, they, they, what do I want to say? They do something different while they're locked up. And then when they get out, it's a different story because you were a means to an end, right? While they're inside. And then when you get out, it's the real world. These men, like these men have been locked down for seven, five, four years. They haven't been around another woman. And you think you're, I'm sorry, sis, that's not how any of this works. So I'd say for Ryan, I'm sorry, bro. This isn't how any of this works at all. No. Um. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's just, and I just don't want it to become an abusive situation. I know people who've been abused and in these types of situations are easily brought back into these spaces. And so I'm just hoping, like I said, he doesn't go there because if she starts feeling trapped and stuff, it could be really not great for anybody. So like you said, Godspeed to them. I hope the best. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I hope I'm wrong in that it lasts forever, but it's not. The one good thing that I'm gonna say is he didn't have a social media presence. So like part of me is like, okay, not a hundred percent a clout chaser, but that doesn't mean anything to me. I do I do wanna say she does need someone in her life that's a rock. However, like her sister said, it didn't need to be him. You know what I mean? Like it just didn't. Um I, I really, truly wish them well. I think that he seems like a nice guy. I do. I think he seems nice. I do think that he has a lot of insecurities. I think seeing the amount of letters Gypsy got from men, um, just like her, her previous boyfriends that still want to reach out to her, I think that's going to get to him. And I think ultimately Gypsy will have to validate him a lot. That's draining. Um and I just wish that I wouldn't say anybody who is dealing with as much trauma as she is should be in the spotlight right now. I hope no. that she's done these interviews. It's able to get her some connections and now she can pull back and wait to launch to land her advocacy program that she wants to do and just kind of sit back because if she doesn't fame is a hell of a drug and 
that's a whole other series of things for her to learn about. Absolutely. And then knowing that she struggled with addiction even later um, while she was, at, you know, it, it's a recipe for it, it, potential disaster. Again, I'm I'm praying the best for her because I want her to win. I think Same. it was a terrible situation to be untenable, right? Um, for her to be in from the beginning. And I pray and hope that she can hold tight to her core group, which is like her, her stepmom, her dad, her sister, like that core group. And she can build that up. And I pray that she's getting like intense therapy, like, like weekly, like, I hope that she's actively pursuing that um, and doesn't slack off on it. Cause you know, it's easy. Like you said, your fame is, is definitely a drug and she's going to yes. get offers up the wazoo for exclusives, book deals. Like I see her, she's posting on socials. Like I, yeah. you know. And people can act like all day, like we haven't heard every single person say with fast money comes fast problems. Let's be real. You have I, you have six million followers. She's going to make a decent chunk of change from even just her social media presence very soon. Um, mm -hmm. Having access to that when you have never had a life like that. Mm -hmm about Taylor Swift about so Ryan on the Nick Vile podcast said that he thinks that the reason they had to leave Kansas City it was because Taylor Swift's people found out she was going to be there and they said no no Taylor can't be there and sent them off he said that on Nick Vile's podcast which I thought was really funny that he said that do we really think that Taylor's checking for a gypsy like that like do we really no. think she was scared of the whole stalking no. thing or whatever they allege? Like, no, Taylor doesn't care. She's unbothered. I believe like, that it's going against your parole. Like, if you're, <laughs> if you asked one parole officer and they said yes, and then you didn't ask the other one, that sounds about right for every person I know who has had to deal with being on parole. It's not fun. You're micromanaged. You're free, mm -hmm. but you still have a lot of things that you can't do. Um, I don't think that Taylor Swift was involved personally. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think it was a matter of she's going to cause a frenzy. Like, I mean, seriously, she got released, right? And they were like, you need to get out of town. Like, we just don't want you here, period, because <laughs> we don't want any smoke. Like, get out of our town, get out of our world, get out of our life. I think it was that. I, they, uh, Taylor could care less, please. See, and he's probably... The Ryan guy, he's going to feed into that star thing. It's going to be like a codependent situation. And she's going to have to constantly affirm him. And he's going to be like, oh, but you you're hit great. It. These people are worried about you. Oh, uh, uh, uh. And she's going to have to be like, no, baby, but it's only you. It's only you, Ryan. But it's her. Like, imagine. <laughs> imagine who's going to be in her DMs. Imagine who's going to be. And she's curious. She's curious. She wants to know. I'm curious, like, I'm curious for her. Like, you know what I mean? Like, hello, people are curious. Um, yeah. Curiosity. And she's entitled to it. Her childhood was stripped away. Her adolescence was stripped away. Her 20s were taken from her. She's never gone to, she's never had a college experience, a party experience. Like, yeah. not saying that she wants to do these things at 32, but I hope that she, what they do want is they want to have a child soon. I hope that they don't. I hope that they wait and I hope that she does not get locked into that. That's just my personal that's thought. Another, see, that's another thing to me with him. Um, and that might be partly her idea too, but I do think it's him. Um, because lock her down with marriage, lock her down with a baby. That gives me, you know, twice the chance of her staying put. Agreed. Agreed. And I think that that in itself are the behaviors that you can't ignore because those men are controlling. They are intentional behaviors the same way that Dee Dee was intentionally making the mm -hmm. circle tighter and tighter. And, the you know, people do have some sort of concept of what they're after. And like I said, if he met her in the outside world, fine. To even write to her in prison, I'm watching you. I don't trust you. You know what I mean? Like to me, it's odd to write to someone after prison with the with the goal of being in a relationship with them because you think they're cute from a murder trial. It's just not common thought process. No, and th and that's what and that's what makes that that's what makes me feel like she was a prime target for a. And I'm not calling him a predator, right. but a predator like person. Because what about her? 
what about her in that trial or before, even in the act, even if you watch that show, what was attractive about little Gypsy Rose Lee? Like she was a victim, like a perpetual victim. Absolutely. What, what, what was your, she was cute. How was she cute? Agreed. Agreed. Like, cute, I, and, and those are the, a, she looked like a kid. Like that's, that's throwing me. The fact that she literally looked like a little kid <laughs> and you said, oh, she's cute. Let me write her in prison. And, like, nobody called him on that. You know what I mean? Like, to me, that's odd. Like, to me, like, you would think at least one interviewer would say, would ask about that. Because it's, it's, and it kind of, you know, I'm not meaning to dump on Ryan, but when there are gray areas like that, you don't know how to feel. I'm not a parent. I would not know how to feel, though. Exactly. And people and anybody is capable of anything. Like I don't run anything by anyone. And of course we're not saying he is or isn't something. It's just, like you said, it's very odd. You didn't come in saying, I saw how she was treated and I know I could treat her better than that. Or I want to help restore her. Or I just want to be a support system for her. You said she was cute and like, bruh. Absolutely. Even just to say I had a similar upbringing. I was in an abusive situation. When I heard your story, I thought we would really be good for each other because we'd understand what we've gone through. That's fine. It's like, you know what, do you need cue cards, Ryan? Because I could tell you a couple of other things that would come across better than just saying that she's cute. And if it's anxiety that's just making him condense down the cute it needs to be worked on, you know, because it could be, yeah. it could be, you know, not knowing what to say. She's cute, but like, you need to work on that because it's giving others the wrong impression. Yeah. I think it was just a matter of, you know, I'm the best thing smoking for her where she's at right now. Let me put my bid in. She's a oh captive audience, right? Like. I agree. I and it, Right. Right. I always say I reserve the right to change my mind. So I just hope that everybody remembers that. And, you know, the Internet, people people can take clips that that that's fine. But our intention is not to berate Ryan. We're actually just saying that there are legitimate, practical red flags that we've noticed that would make us if she was our daughter or even a close friend say, are you sure? Are you 100 percent sure? For sure. And that's all we're saying. Absolutely. In our way. Um, season three of Natalia Speaks, I want to bring you back on so that we can recap that episode together. For sure. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Let's do it. And I also want to say as a reminder, if you haven't already throughout this episode gotten out your phone, get it out, follow my sweet perspective, one word, on TikTok, Utah, it was called Utah, YouTube, and Instagram, mm-hmm. and wave and say that you came from my podcast so that Ashley knows. Yay. Yes. Yes. So, so awesome. follow Ashley. Yay. Say that you came from our podcast. Tell us what you thought of the episode. If you have any differing opinions, let us know. We're both curious, both open to them. And stay tuned for our next episode to do season three do you have anything parting that you want to say or tell people about no leah thank you so much for having me this was so much fun i will be back when any i'll be back whenever you ask because this was amazing um yeah and if you guys haven't watched um natalia grace or natalia speaks or the prison confessions of gypsy rose blanchard you guys what are you doing go check them out